so what i have done is to make it as clinical as possible dr arpandev's uh, lecture was excellent um uh, just to tell that we i am as of now managing a patient with parathyroidosis which we will publish the patient is on sinacalcet and calcitonin spray and he is doing quite well um so uh, sometimes hypokalemia presents to the physician and uh, you the idea is to find out the real culprit leading to hypokalemia and sometimes it is a uh, hypokalemia is masqueraded presents uh, and it's an endocrine problem which presents as hypokalemia so i'll start with the story is always good to start with the story now this uh, family came to me this is the patient and the sister and this is the patient's child mm -hmm. this uh, lady presented uh, in 2008 actually this photograph is taken in 16th of september 22 but this lady presented to us in 2008 uh she actually presented to another hospital with quadriparesis and uh, she has been she was hypertensive at that time on two antihypertensives uncontrolled so they worked up and they found that she had hypokalemia cpk was high but quadriparesis they did an L lp they did an nmg they initially diagnosed her as gbs they wanted to give her ivig and since the cost of IV ivig was very high so she got shifted to our hospital under a neurologist and then the neurologist called me because she was hypertensive and hypokalemic and he thought that it could be something related to a hormone so we did an investigation we did a, a morning atm aldosterone which was high and uh, the first uh, saline loading test we did we did the saline loading test in the icu uh, in which uh, over 4 hours 2 liters of fluid is given and after that a pre and a post uh, aldosterone is done and to see the suppression of less than 5 nm per dl it was unsuppressed and then we did a ct scan it was a right adrenal adenoma uh, she was stabilized and surgery was done and she recovered and um, um, so uh, this was the adenoma so this lady uh, uh, was initially obviously she presented as an unmarried lady and uh, she was moving around with uncontrolled hypertension for several years and it turned out to have con syndrome primary hyperaldosteronism and then later on she got married and she came with a child and i was really really happy and we clicked this photograph uh, the second uh, case is also very very interesting this 40 year old male presented uh, was a known diabetic presented with quadriparesis to us uh, you see the uh, potassium in this uh, it is 2018 he presented with a potassium 1.6 and um, uh, so we obviously it is an emergency we gave him parenteral uh, potassium replacement but as you notice that uh, he was hypertensive and he was pushing oid we did a low overnight dexamethasone suppression test which is a screening test for cushings it came unsuppressed then we did a low dose uh, which is a confirmatory test for cushings which was again uh, unsuppressed and we did a overnight high dose and when this was also unsuppressed means either you're dealing with a pituitary macroadenoma or you're dealing with an adrenal cause of cushings uh, and the acth was significantly high uh, when the acth was so high we could we thought that and there was severe hypokalemia we thought we should look for an ectopic source we got a ct scan done and then we found a mass in the thymus the patient had a very high chromogranate was a neuroendocrine tumor the patient underwent, underwent surgery and the patient recovered initially but then again he started having a lot of weakness and we unfortunately unfortunately lost him during covid so sometimes you get a patient who is diabetic it is said that you the eyes do not see what the mind does not know so you have to keep your eyes and ears open and sometimes you may have a second cause of secondary diabetes especially when diabetes has significant proximal vessel weakness or hypertension or present with severe hypokalemia this is another case with ectopic uh, acth syndrome uh, again this lady presented with a uh, Uh, potassium of 1.37 unfortunately although we diagnosed the patient i put her on ketoconazole she was lost to follow up we could not do more, more for her uh, later on uh, the next after the adrenals the next set of cases are very very interesting and i am sure you, we will all encounter them and sometimes even i may have missed it so this lady presented with hypokalemia and paraparesis she was 56 years of age 
uh, hypothyroid with progressive weakness over at least eight years. She was having recurrent admissions with hypokalemia. Uh, any small trigger of infection or loose motions presented, she used to present with hypokalemia. So, uh, and she was advised potassium replacement. And uh, when she presented with hypokalemia and hypothyroidism, we did a ABG. In ABG, found that we found that she had acidosis. Uh, bicarbonate was around 13. There was uh, pH was 7.3. But you see here that the urine pH was 6.5. So she had what is known as the distal RTA. And over these years, you see that recurrent she was admitted in various hospitals with hypokalemia. And on one occasion, she was even put, it, put on a ventilator for a day. And then, of course, when you treat her, uh, we give shawl solution, but we here we give portrait and we give sobesis for, for bicarbonate. And then you see when the uh, ABG uh, recovered, the pH was 7.4 and bicarbonate was normal. This lady also had Shermer's test, which was positive, which uh, she had dry eyes. And although we didn't work up with a complete uh, uh, antibody panel, but I'm sure she would have turned out to be um, uh, Jogren syndrome. This is another case with distal RTA. So whenever you have a lady with or a more more uh, prone uh, lady, uh, females are more prone for hypokalemia and thyroid and Sjogren's. But otherwise, one should keep that in mind as well. This is a second case again treated with portrait and sobosis fort. So it is known that you could have primary Sjogren's syndrome with hypokalemic paralysis. So these are our two cases. Another interesting case is hypokalemic periodic paralysis. This 25-year-old male presented with progressive weakness of lower limbs, gradually progressive, and he could not walk unaided. Uh, and also he had history of weight loss, hyperdefication, and palpitations. And somebody had suggested that you take syrup or whenever you have such episodes. He turned out to have hyperthyroidism. And his potassium was not too low, probably some of his he was taking, but it is known that even in thyrotoxic periodic paralysis, which is a type of hypokalemic paralysis with thyrotoxicosis, you could have almost near normal potassium and still the patient can be symptomatic. And then, of course, the patient was treated with uh, the mainstay of treatment is to cure hyperthyroidism. Definitely. Once you do that, the paralytic uh, episodes uh, then go away. Otherwise, what you have to do is to uh, advise the patient to not take significant carbohydrate meal because that triggers insulin release and shift of potassium into the cells. So this is a case of thyrotoxic periodic paralysis. Uh, so these were the various cases I was discussing about uh, uh, hypokalemia. Uh, one case, I'm sorry, I, I have my teacher who is the next speaker, Professor Dr. Uh, Subhash Yadav. I'll just take his permission. I saw this case yesterday and I just could not resist sharing this case with everybody. This case was referred to me by a senior physician from Khandwa. 43-year-old lady presented with hypertension, premature menopause, hyponatremia and reversible cardiomyopathy. She got a, this is NGO done, I think on the 25th of August. She presented to that hospital with this ECG, which is frank. You would say there are hyperacute changes of uh, in ECG. Tropi was probably po positive. Her eco showed ejection reaction of 15%, but the NGO done there was absolutely normal. Then they discharged her. But what you see here, if you pay attention, she had a thyroid function which showed low T3, low T4, and low TSH. And uh, then uh, she presented to me yesterday, this is 17th of September, with a uh, sodium of 117. So, and then we took a history in 2006. She had postpartum hemorrhage. Uh, she did not lactate. She did not, she had premature menopause. She had recurrent episodes of hyponatremia. And she probably has Sheehan syndrome and a very rare, uh, which is known as a Tukutsubo uh, cardiomyopathy, which is a reversible cardiomyopathy. Uh, so, um, so idea is for the physician to keep in mind that sometimes like Dr. Arpandev stated that once you have hypercalcemia, you have to treat it, it as an emergency, but you have to find out what is lurking behind the scenes, which is causing hypercalcemia. So what we discussed here today is thyrotoxic periodic paralysis. We discussed adrenal steroid excess, which is alkalotic hypokalemia. We discussed primary hyperaldosteronism, cons case, which we discussed. And then we also discussed cases of renal tubular acidosis. If you have these in mind, then you cannot miss. 
and of course you have to think out of the box because in clinical medicine sometimes you may encounter cases like i encountered one yesterday thank you so much